Hi, this is the second part of the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve. Um, in this one, I am showing molecular speed versus number of molecules. So you already know, area under the three curves, that's the same. So we're going to have uh, the same number of molecules total underneath each curve. What's different, two things, the average speed and the distribution of speeds. Um, I had shared with you that if you take the apex, so the very middle, highest point of all three of these, that gives you the average speed for that molecule. So average speed of O2 would be down here. Average speed of neon would be right there. And then the average speed of the helium. Now, you know with gases, the smaller the molar mass, the faster it goes. That is because kinetic energy equals one half mv squared, right there. So the smaller the mass, the higher the speed. At a given temperature, all of those um, gases have the same kinetic energy. So that's where this is coming from. Um, so of course, the helium, small, smaller mass of four, that's going to go faster than the oxygen at a molar mass of 32. Um, now here's what's tricky, again, for students, is they look at this and go, how is it that helium has a higher speed, a faster speed, but look at that curve, how low that curve is, um, is all the way down here. And remember, you have the same number of atoms in the O2 as you do in the helium. Um, what happens as you increase um, temperature, you're going to have a wider range of speeds, a wider range of energy for all of those helium atoms. So down here, you're gonna have really slow. If I use vectors to represent this, you're gonna have really slow. I would use little arrows to show the directions, the speed of um, the helium. But then here, we're gonna have super fast, right? Could show all kinds of, um, and I would use long vectors. These uh, long vectors would represent super fast. And then down here, you know, in the middle, I have kind of that average speed. What you notice here in the oxygen is that we're going to have a huge amount, almost half of um, the oxygen with these low speeds. And then the high speeds here might only be like twice that amount. Um, so this larger molecule is going to have um, much lower speeds that overall the average of the speed of all of those molecules puts it way down here. Whereas the helium is going to have a lot of molecules with really, really high speeds. So when you take the average speed of all of those molecules, it puts that average way up here. So there's your distribution curve. The key again is to remember that the area under the curve is the same. And just because the height when we're looking at number of molecules is lower, that doesn't mean that the speed is lower. It just means that you have a wider distribution of speeds. You're going to have some slow, some middle, and more fast. Whereas on this one, you have a lot in that slow and some in the middle. To find the average, you just go to the, the apex. So that is interpreting and reading distribution curves.